If there's one thing I hear a lot when it comes to the Persona 4 girls, it's that everyone seems to hate Yukiko Amagi. And I personally don't understand the hate train for Yukiko, because she's like one of my favorite characters from Persona 4's cast. I mean, I think she has some great character moments and a great social link, so I feel that I might need to explain why she's not the worst girl. Shin Megami Tensei's Persona is a series mainly focusing on the psychology and sociology of the world around us. This series mystifies and tackles ideas that everyone we know deals with, such as how rumors hold a strong grasp on the world as we know it, and our never-ending struggle with the unavoidable fate that is death. And in Persona's 4 case, it struggles on a less serious topic, but still one that needed to be addressed, which is media's effect on society. That's why the TV is such a big focus in Persona 4, and that's why the shadows of the people inside the TVs are their inner thoughts and their inner ideals cranked up to 11. Out of a possible five. Because as we know through human nature that when people are placed in front of a camera or placed in such a spot where people can notice them or view them, their points get drastically different. They don't seem to hold as many in-between or gray area points, they seem to be more one side or the other with things, and that's why the personas or the shadows are so over the top with their appearances. Yet they remain in a whole to represent the core ideas of that person. So with that, we look at Persona 4 as a whole, we see Yukiko. She was born into luxury. She was the daughter of the owner of the famous Amaki Inn. She was raised from early childhood to be the perfect fit to take up the inn when she finally reaches the age to do that. She seems to be solely focusing on it during the early half of the game. She comes off as inept and very simple-minded, and this is shown to us for most of our interactions with it right away. And as the game is presenting it to you in the early half, it comes off that Yukiko is too preoccupied with the issues going on at the inn. You notice when the average modern day Atlas fan asks her out, what? Are you coming with me? Or not? Uh, sorry, I'm not going. Uh, screw you, stupid bitch. She doesn't understand what he's even talking about or when she stone faces people in, in like mid conversation. Not to mention that most of the people throughout the game up to this point have been calling her Yukiko, which means snow child. And this name could be a red herring in itself. Her personality type at this moment comes off as a Dendare-esque type of character, when that's nothing at all what she is. And not to mention that everyone in your party has also been talking up her beauty and femininity to you. These appear to be the only things that these people are grasping from her. People are only looking at Yukiko from a surface level. Then Yukiko gets kidnapped and thrown into the TV world, where we finally get a glimpse of what her inner thoughts and ideas are. From this, we see Yukiko represented as an over-the-top princess looking to score with a charming prince. She is more blunt about her opinions and ideas, and she talks constantly about wanting to be free. She wants her prince charming to come and take her away take her away from her responsibilities of the world, take her away from everything. She also smashes the trope a little bit about Prince Charming needing to be some sort of male to come do this. She doesn't care who it is. All she cares about is someone coming and taking her away from her responsibilities. Then after rejecting her own inner thoughts and ideas, her shadow takes full form and you can see the very obvious symbolism of the shadow in the birdcage, meant to represent her obvious trap feelings of her life and being raised into where she needs to be, but it goes into something bigger. There's a bigger idea. Because again, Persona 4 is specifically about challenging the ideas of media and their effect on the world around us. Because in the events leading up to her getting kidnapped, she was put on the spotlight where an interviewer kept bringing up the fact that she would take on the inn itself. From this and how everyone talks about Yukiko in the early half of Persona 4, it appears that everyone has already made her decision for her. She will inherit the end. What else is she supposed to do? What she's expected to? This idea, this media being delivered to her, made her suppress all of her negative emotions and feelings that she might have that would make the end look bad because she's gonna be the head of the famous Amagi Inn someday. She can't make it look bad. That'd be awful. She's having adulthood forced onto her, and her only answer is to place herself inside of a birdcage of her own design. And after the party defeats her shadow and she accepts it and it becomes her persona, she accepts the fact that 
Those are truly her ideas, truly her feelings. Yukiko from here on acts completely different. No one else goes through this kind of change in the story, besides maybe Naoto, but she more just comes out and is more open to the rest of the party. And maybe Yosuke, but that was mostly the end of his social link and it doesn't really carry over to the main story of the game. Though speaking of social links, Yukiko's is really great, as we get a tale of someone who finally realizes that they aren't trapped. Yukiko's eyes are finally open to the idea that she can leave. She isn't trapped in Inaba. She's flooded with freedom, and she decides to try to leave as soon as she can. Though, as we go deeper and learn more about her as a person, we learn that she's learning skills that she never would have needed to learn, like cooking, which is one of the ones that she holds on to the most and becomes one of the gimmicks of her character because it allows her to express herself. But the most interesting part about the social link is when Yukiko, even though her struggles seem to be up to this point with working at the inn and bearing her family's burden of inheriting it, the idea was not that. It was the idea of choice in the matter. I've decided not to leave Inaba. I never really objected to being the inn's manager per se. I just didn't like the fact that it wasn't up to me. I felt that my life was on rails. And I thought running away was the only choice for me. But no longer. I want to protect the family in. Because everyone around her told her that that's what she was going to do, she rebelled against that. She didn't like that. Even if she did enjoy working there, she didn't enjoy being told that that's her place. She wanted freedom, that's her choice. Her choice was freedom, and she freely chooses to go back to the inn. And the funny thing is, Amagi means freedom. She wanted freedom of choice, which is something that most people deal with every day in their daily lives. It plays into the idea that the media tells you something that you want to hear about a person, even if it isn't completely true. When reporters claim people are things that they aren't, Yukiko is a character who represents standing against that and choosing to make your own path. She won't be told what to do anymore. She will freely choose to go where she wants to go. You can see this in the fact that even after she does accept the inn as her future, she still researches a job license. She still does the things that she was doing prior to this. But oh yes, I'm still studying cooking and job licenses. I don't plan to leave anymore, but I thought I might as well. But she also takes up the inn. We also see from her persona's creation on that Yukiko is more than just a stone-faced, serious, dendare type of person. She has a seriousness to her, but it seems to be more of a character she acts out. She's honestly more sadistic than she is clueless. That's the limit of your love for Kanjiko. Um, can we just say that they're both fake? That's what it comes down to in the end, right? What? Why are you listening to him? Would that be bad? Of course it would! Assuming that from the start is pretty messed up! What a beautiful sight! <laughs> oh, sorry. Guess I missed. We also pick up the idea that she probably is against the ideas of crass humor or like lewd jokes directed at her due to the fact that she had to put up with them so often before she was able to fully express herself and felt the experience of the TV world, which honestly makes sense. Also, let's not forget that Yukiko's final persona is Amaterasu, which is a goddess who will bring light, which will return light to the world. Someone who will return the freedom of light, the freedom of life, basically, to people. There's there's more shit there, but I'm not even gonna fucking dig into that because that, that has a lot of fucking meanings to it, so... Yukiko is one of the most adult characters in Persona 4 compared to the rest of the cast. Standing up there with Kaji and Naoto, her ideals of freedom, her personality, her want to let out all of her bottle up emotions. This is why she comes off as so awkward at times because she's genuinely trying to emote. She's genuinely trying to laugh and it may seem strange, but she's finally allowing herself to cut loose. And also the people who find her laugh annoying, like it's the only other character trait that she has. Think to yourself, is Chie's meat shit any less annoying? Is it is Reset's cr annoying fucking crying and her constant flirty shit, is that any less annoying than Yukiko's laugh? Because I personally never found her laugh to be bothersome in the bit. Also, let's not forget to mention that in the later Persona 4 story, she's one of the only characters not to experience drastic character drop-off rate of quality. In the beginning, a lot of people don't realize how one-note some of the Persona 4 characters are and how much that Yukiko is able to rise 
and develop as time goes on. I'm not saying that Yukiko is the best character in Persona 4, but I'm saying that she's definitely not the worst girl, easily above Chie and Rise. But debatable with Naoto, that's more personal preference, but Kaji is the best girl in Persona 4, and that's a fact. Case closed. Yukiko is great. Stop being stupid. Play a real Shin Megumi Tensei game like Nocturne or Strange Journey. And by Shimonetta.